Hello and welcome to this video from UNCG University Libraries, introducing you to some of the basic concepts of fair use. This video is created for TAP participants and anyone else who's interested in fair use. We are Maggie Murphy, and I use she, her pronouns. And Jenny Dale, and I use she, her pronouns, and we're from university, the University Libraries at UNCG. We want to give you this caveat that we are not copyright lawyers and we are not your lawyers because in fact we are not lawyers of any kind. This video is really meant to provide you with some general information about fair use and should not be taken as legal advice. So this is an excerpt from the U.S. Copyright Act section 107 that it describes and begins to explain fair use. So notwithstanding the provisions of sections 106 and 106A, the fair use of a copyrighted work, including such use by reproduction in copies or phono records, or by any other means specified by that section for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship or research, is not an infringement of copyright. In determining whether the use made of a work in any particular case is a fair use, the factors to be considered shall include the four factors that we will be outlining for you shortly. In determining fair use, there are four factors to consider. Uh, no single factor will um, determine whether your use of a copyrighted work is fair. Each of these needs to be weighed against each other and I will outline each one separately in just a moment. But the four factors are the purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount or substantiality of the portion used, and the effect of the use on the potential market for or value of the work. The first factor is the purpose and character of the use. And this factor considers how the copyrighted work is being used. Uh, considerations include whether the use is for commercial or non-commercial purposes. Um, the Copyright Act uh, specifically outlines uh, commercial of a commercial nature or for nonprofit educational purposes, as Jenny just noted on a previous slide, as um, purposes specifically outlined as needing to be considered for fair use. Um, other additional purposes uh, that need to be considered are whether your use is for entertainment or for purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research, with that latter grouping also being purposes that are explicitly named in the Copyright Act as purposes that might be considered fair use. And then finally, this factor also considers whether a use is transformative in character. A 1994 Supreme Court case um, defined transformative use as being a use that adds something new with a further purpose or different character, altering the first with new expression, meaning, or message. Uh, parody or satire are examples of potentially transformative works, as are remix or appropriation practices in fine art. Um, fair use favors transformative works over uses that merely copied the original. Just like uh, fair use favors non-commercial purposes over commercial purposes and purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research over purposes of entertainment. The second factor is the nature of the copyrighted work. This factor considers cop uh, characteristics of the copyrighted work itself that you would be using, um, including whether the original work is factual or fictional. Um, so whether it is something journalistic or something creative, um, or whether the work is published or unpublished. Fair use tends to favor works that have been published uh, and works that are factual and not creative. However, like we've already said, um, each of these things need to be weighed against each other and fair use of creative or fictional works um, uh, is completely possible. Um, uh, it's not that you can't use creative works. It's just one of the considerations in one column or the other um, for fair use. The third factor is the amount or substantiality of the portion used. Um, the Co uh, Columbia Copyright Advisory Service notes that though the law does not uh, set exact quantity limits, generally the more you use of a copyrighted work, 
the less likely you are within fair use. The amount of the original is usually evaluated relative to its size or length and in light of the amount that you need to serve a proper objective. In addition, um, a court has ruled that a low resolution or thumbnail version of an image is equivalent to a lesser amount. Um, you also need to consider whether the portion you're using is considered the heart of the work. Even if you only make, a small, uh, make use of a small portion of a copyrighted work, your use might not be considered fair. Um, courts have ruled that even uses of small amounts might be excessive if they take the heart of the work. For example, a short clip of a motion picture might be acceptable, but not if it encompasses the most creative elements of the film. Uh, similarly, it might be acceptable to quote a relatively small portion of a magazine article, but not if what you are quoting is the journalistic scoop. Uh, and those examples also come from Columbia's Copyright Advisory Service. Finally, courts consider whether the original work um, could have been uh, realistically or reasonably purchased or licensed. In other words, could you have paid to use the work? If so, this weighs against fair use. Um, and finally, uh, courts will consider whether the uh, use is a or whether the use will result um, in negative impact on the market for the original work, uh, resulting in fewer sales or profits for the copyright holder. If so, that fact also weighs against fair use. So hopefully you can tell based on um, what Nagy shared in that last section that fair use is a good bit more complicated than we might often think about it being. So what we wanna do here is just to go through some common myths about educational fair use. Fair use myth number one, all nonprofit educational use is fair use. This is a really common one. Nonprofit educational use does tend to favor fair use, as Maggie went over in that first factor. Um, but all four factors, as we've said, of fair use really have to be weighed against each other in each case. Fair use myth number two. If there is no copyright mark or notice, it's okay to use it without permission. This is also just a myth. Since 1978, registering a copyright or displaying a copyright mark is not a prerequisite for protection. Unless you know a source or an item is in the public domain, it's good to assume that it's copyrighted. Fair use myth number three. If I clearly cite or attribute the source, I don't need to worry about copyright. Giving credit is definitely important and we encourage it but it doesn't automatically make your instructional use fair use. It's really about the way you're using the original source and not just the way that you're attributing it. Attribution is not, as you'll remember, one of the four factors of fair use that we went through. This is a big one and wanna hear a lot. Fair use myth number four, if I only use 10% or one chapter or five seconds or a certain number of pages of a work, it's considered fair use. This is a very common misconception because as what we've read to you from the Copyright Act demonstrate, there's not any specified amount or portion of a work that automatically constitutes fair use. Fair use myth number five, my department head or librarian or lawyer can tell me definitively whether something is fair use or not. Fair use can only be determined definitively by a court. And just to add to that, sometimes we don't get to uh, find out about those. Uh, sometimes when things are settled out of court, for example, we don't always find out whether or not they were ruled in favor of fair use or not. So really the only way that we can definitively know if a use is considered fair use is through a court determination. And fair use myth number six, this is too confusing. I should totally avoid even worrying about it because the law is confusing and unreliable. Fair use is essential for our teaching and our research. 
weighing the four factors um, and then considering these two questions, is your use transformative and are you only using the amount you need, can be a really good first step in determining whether or not you need to further investigate whether or not your use favors fair use. If you've got any questions, we encourage you to contact your liaison librarian. Again, we're not lawyers, but we can help you get on the right track and we can also help you look for resources. We will also include some resources, including some of the um, Columbia resources that have been mentioned in this video uh, in this Canvas module. Thanks so much for joining us today and going through some of our favorite myths about fair use.